Hey, Fight Fans, it's Michelle Joy Phelps with Boxing Social in partnership with FreeBets.com, Empire Fight Store, and Forged Irish Stout. And I'm joined now with the one and only Johnny Nelson. Johnny, it's great to see you here in Riyadh. How are you? Uh, I'm good, thank you. That was a mouthful. Like, you guys are doing <laughs> well right now, man. So uh, it's good to be here. Uh, I think last time I was over this side of the world was 2019. Uh, so it's just, I've come to see the action. Yeah. And I must admit, I, I am quietly impressed with, yeah. with everything, the, the vibe, the energy, the, 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 the misconception. Uh, so getting out here now, it's good, the press is here and everything, good build up. Riyadh has really grown yeah. so oh. much since yeah. then, hasn't it? Yeah. It has, and that's what I'm saying, the misconception, you get out of here, and it's actually, it, it's very inviting, yeah. very cool, it's very, I understand what's happening. Now you've got to be here to see it, yeah. uh, to feel it. So I think Friday night will be another, uh, uh, step forward into people saying, you know what, I want a piece of that action. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have a big fight coming ahead or on f uh, Friday now, yeah. and not Saturday, on Friday. Uh, Anthony Joshua versus Francis Ngannou. Uh, were you surprised when you heard that the fight was made? Because I was. You know what, when um, uh, straight after uh, the, the fight was done and, and, and on while the lost, I thought they're going to throw Ngannou's name in. And, okay. and Ngannou threw his, his hat in the ring straight away. And his excellency said, yeah, let's get this let's fight do done. And, and out of all, honestly, I just thought to myself, why would you do that, man? And I know I spoke to Drew, Drew Cooper earlier on. He said, Johnny, that's the wrong way to think. You know, why would the best not fight the best? And I thought, AJ's striving to be the champion again. Mm. This is a big risk fight. Common sense should tell you it should be day and night. It should be a shutout. But you remember, Ngannou's coming from being the best in his his sport. Mm -hmm. Now he stepped into our sport. We've got some boxing yeah. snobbery going on. Thinking <laughs> this man should not go in and be able to beat the likes of Anthony Joshua. Shouldn't be. But I'm going to come punch. He's powerful. He showed a side to himself that we were all sleeping on when he boxed mm -hmm. Tyson Fury. Calm, patience. You get it up, up close and personal with this guy and he's a proper unit. So now, are you telling me that 10 rounds, he's not going to touch Anthony Joshua once? And we're talking body shots, you know. We're not talking headshots, we're talking body shots. This guy's a powerhouse. AJ needs to box, use his skill, use all the experience that's gotten to this point in his career. And that should be the job. But the problem is making sure that's enough. Johnny, let's talk a bit about what we've been able to see with Anthony Joshua in the last two fights with Ben yeah. Davison. Um, an interesting storyline with that one, obviously, given that should Anthony Joshua be successful against Francis, Francis Ngannou, we're going to potentially see him face Tyson Fury if he's successful against Alexander Usyk and Ben Davison sort of being at one point on the other side and now on Anthony Joshua's in, in Anthony Joshua's corner. Um, but he's done he's done really well with Anthony. I saw that he was letting his hands go. He was less. And I don't want to say fearful because that's not the right word, but you get what I'm... Apprehensive. apprehensive. There you go. Less apprehensive against his opponent. Um, we, we started to see a glimpse of what we saw pre-Andy Ruiz's fight. I mean, that's why I think this Friday yeah. will tell us how successful that union is because AJ's getting in there with a dangerous, heavy-handed opponent. Yeah. If he can still take that same mindset he's had in the last two fights that he's had with Ben, into this one and be as successful. Then you got to say, Ben, you know what? Whatever you're doing with AJ, you're the man. You, you've got it. You've got it. You've clicked him in, because because AJ's been around the world. He's, he's trained with the best, he's, and he's found home in Ben. And so so Ben might be that 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 last puzzle that works about building a man's confidence, not about uh, ability, not about you know adding something more, because he's been around the best. And I, I've been critical of Ben, you know, and, and I'm just saying it how it is. I thought. I thought has Ben, is Ben the right man for AJ? You know, because is he, has he got the experience, is he in the right position to take on such a, uh, a, a, a specimen of a fighter that's in touching distance of a world title? I don't know, but looking at his last two fights, you saw a change in attitude. Yeah. So therefore, if the attitude is taken into Friday night, I'll say, you know what, Ben? Big props, You're big props, because whatever you said, whatever you're saying to him to get into his head, the penny has finally dropped. Mm -hmm. We know what's on the line. There's a lot of pressure added to Anthony. Um, we saw that the last time Anthony fought. There was a, a lot going into that fight. Should he be should he be successful in Ottawa and he was going to get a shot at Deontay Wilder? We saw what happened there. But there's always a lot of pressure added on him. Um, from what you've been able to gather, how, how do you see him sort of handling all of that go, coming into uh, fight week? I think AJ's been scarred by the ups and downs of our sport. Uh, one minute he's loved, next minute he's criticised, right. and, and, and he's been up there. So now his heart's hardened 
Uh, he surrounds himself, as far as, far as I, I know, with his family. Um, he's, he's, he's trying to get peace within himself. And so, so, and so you st it shows he's still learning, even though he's been so successful. And so if he's, if he's able to not lock out the noise, yeah. lock, knock out the, the what I say, the what anybody else says, and still stay focused and be concentrate on him and what he's got to do, then you know what? There's going to always be pressure at this point. AJ, he, he carried a, a lot on his shoulders. You know, he's lifted the, the finances, the attention in our sport as a, as a country. So now he's been there once, he's been there twice, he wants to get there again. So he has his own pressure. I don't think we, I don't think we can add, it, add to it. He, he, he doesn't have to box. He could walk away tomorrow and be happy, live in the sunset. We won't see him. He's doing it because he wants to challenge himself. I like that. I like that. I just want to see what version of AJ we see Friday night and that'll tell me right now you're there boy now you're there that, that's you when Francis Agano fought Tyson Fury we all didn't know what to expect I think it's safe to say that all of us boxing heads overlooked Francis Ngannou snobbery that's yeah. what it was and I we, did exactly the same I said nah this should be a shutout this should be a shutout and you know what I think I believe Tyson Fury thought the same as well yeah. so we can't just blame him for underestimating the man in front of him you know we all did and so we slept on him. Yeah. Now Ngarnu has stepped in with the wall. Right. So we've learned a harsh lesson to say, don't underestimate a man that's in front of you. Because in all reality, you know, I'm a fighter, I've been boxing since I was a kid. I'm thinking no man that's not been doing our sport is gonna come in and, and manhandle a boxer at boxing, you know, with, with such little experience. And Garner proved, you know what, don't sleep on me because I'm dangerous, right. I, I, I can do it. Anthony Joshua should be able to go in there and totally ban but should be able to go in there and totally bamboozle him with his boxing knowledge. Well now he kind of has I wouldn't say a blueprint, but now he knows what to expect, whereas Tyson didn't no one really knew what to expect with Ngano. Without a doubt, it's a lesson learned we saw it when AJ boxed uh, Andy Ruiz, Ruiz for the first time. Mm. You know, and then once we knew what Andy Ruiz was about, I think Andy's boxed twice since fighting AJ. And, and everybody knows what he's about. He's in the Who Needs Him club. No one, nobody wants to fight because he's dangerous. He's got fast hands. So, so Ruiz is like, his, his, his activity has slowed down massively. The same thing's happening with Ngannou. Ngannou, even if, even if he loses Friday night, but he puts up a good performance, people are going to look at him thinking, why would I fight you? You know, you have got, you're in a position where you've got nothing to offer apart from danger. So therefore, he'll find himself in the Who Needs Him club. He's in a, he's in a, a great position now to absolutely shock the boxing world. If he turns AJ over, if he, if he manages to pull it off, then all of a sudden you're thinking, AJ's a former two-time two, two -time heavyweight world champion, a former Olympian, he's the amount of ex-world champions he's boxed. And this guy's came along and taught the script. So there's a lot of jeopardy, jeopardy, there's a lot going on where people will think, wow, there's a lot more at stake than we thought initially. Tyson Fury did an interview where he talked about um, Francis Ngannou should be basically thanking him for putting him in this position, make, having him make many, many millions. Um, he should get on his knees and kiss his feet. What do you think of those comments? I think Tyson is the, the king of trash talk. Yeah. Uh, and, king, and, it, and it's fight week, you know, he's, 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 he's still in the headlines, you know, he's not fighting this week, so he's doing his job. Yeah. Um, if you take that serious, and I'm quite sure he doesn't really truly believe that, if you take that serious, then then you, you, you need to question yourself. He, he's tongue-in-cheek and he's playing, it, playing his role well. What did you make of the fact that we didn't end up getting Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua? I mean, Joseph Parker, who's also on the undercard against uh, Big Ass Shang. <laughs> My God, that guy's talking about a unit. That's a unit right there. Um, Zhilai Zhang. So what did you make of, of that whole situation? Well, I think Deontay Wilder, he just looked old overnight. Uh, something was missing and, and before the fight at the press conference, Dante Wilder in the press conference, he, I had to commend him, I said this guy is class, I don't know what he's been doing in between then and now but how he presented himself, how he spoke, how he was respectful of everybody, I thought he was the one I could think, remember, there was two people I could remember from that press conference, him and Baby Miller, Baby Miller for being the loud mouth and, 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 and Wilder for being such a cool gent, yeah. then the fight went the way it went. And, and, and you understand, you know, he's in a different mental place in his life. He's, a, he's found a peace in his life. Does that suit the sport of our boxing? I, if he wants to be the fighter he was, he probably doesn't. Um, but for, for Wilder, you know, if he still has the ambitions to be the fighter he was, 
I, I don't know if we can ever see that again because I, I've never seen him look so vulnerable in a fight. Even this is this guy's the heaviest hitting heavyweight I've ever seen live. I just think it gone, it disappeared. Maybe it was an off night, maybe it was, but we'll, we'll, we'll find so out again. So that fight wouldn't, fast, wouldn't actually interest you because I know Anthony's saying... Oh God, listen, trust me, that fight's gonna happen. That fight's always be, that fight's yeah. still valuable. That fight's still of intrigue. That fight is going to happen. Mm -hmm. No matter what anybody says, it's gonna happen. Uh, and it's a case of let the, let, let's get this out of the way first. Let's get Friday night out of the way, get Usyk uh, Fury out of the way, mm -hmm. and then, but that fight will happen things all being well for AJ. Mm -hmm. Then let's talk about the co-main event. Um, we have Joseph Parker versus Zhilei Zhang. Um, how do you see that fight going? You know what, Zhang is a big, strong unit. We saw how we um, how we dismantled Joe Joyce twice. Um, Joe Joyce, Joe Joyce went there, went, you got greedy. You know, this guy can be hit. This guy's he's a tough, big unit. I think Joseph Parker, he's got a snatch and grab. In and out, snatch and grab. You stand there, get involved in a, get, you know, involved in a war with Zhilei Zhang. The same thing is going to happen again. I think Joseph Parker's cute enough, smart enough, former world champion to actually think, I won't make that mistake. And he's seen he has the benefit of hindsight not to make that mistake. It's an intriguing fight. Joseph Parker has the ability to do it. It's, does he have the discipline? He's got a good trainer in Andy Lee that's in, in his ear that will, that will have devised what has to happen. And if he follows Andy Lee's um, um, guidance, then I, I, I expect Joseph Parker to come out as a winner. If he deviates off the game plan, he gets turned over. Um, Dillian White was just cleared. I think it was yeah, today. Yeah. Was it yeah. today that that was announced? Uh, just what are your thoughts on him being able to come back and, and fight again? You know what? I actually, I, I got the news the same as you. And uh, in regards to that, if that's clear, if the board, if the board are cool with it, I'm cool with it. You know, as far as they're concerned, he's ticked every box, uh, and they're, they're happy with it. So if the board are cool with it, I'm cool with it. If they're not cool with it, then that's the question. So the same headlines you saw are the same headlines I saw. For Dillian, of course he wants it. He's a fighting man. He must have been so frustrated, so mad. Now he's got the, the clearance uh, of the headlines read. He, he wants to get in this mix. You know, and, and Dillian, you know, he's been, he's, he's almost touched world championship level, but he's just not, he's just falling short. So now, is he a gatekeeper? Is he a guy that, that wants to get the opportunity to say, you've got to get past me first. I've been in with both these guys. Let's see what you've got. This is a great place, a great platform for any heavyweight that's in the top 10 to, to still be operating. You know, the platform's here, and His Excellency has given you the opportunity to say, come on, you know, put yeah. up a show. What do you make of the fact that when we are getting these failed drug tests and, and then we're seeing months, if not a year later, that they're being cleared of that? Um, and that's what I'm saying. This is why I'm saying to you, I don't understand. Yeah, if you failed to yesterday and, you, and, you, and it's a mistake today, somebody has to be held accountable. Yeah, because uh, you're you've a career. Lost, yes. you, you, you've lost time out of your career. You've lost the money you could make out of your career. So if, there, if there's a mistake, somebody has to be held accountable. Instead career of and reputations are destroyed. Exactly. And so this is why I just need to understand a little bit more about what well, you've got cleared. Who's cleared you? The boxing board are cool with it. I want, I want to know the boxing board's explanation. Say we cleared it because of X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. I don't know enough, so it's not fair for me to comment. Yeah, no. I mean, hell, I don't think anybody really does at this point. Yeah. Uh, lastly, I'd like to ask you um, a big fight that's coming up over in America: Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. It's there's been What's a going lot. On? Yeah. I don't, again, I, I don't really know. First of all, great fight. Yeah, wicked fight. Secondly, we don't really know what's going on with Ryan Garcia at the moment. Is he trolling us? Are we starting to see a meltdown happen in front of the camera and we're ignoring it? We're, we're, we're overlooking it. Oh, has he got a white crazy so people don't can't right. read him, can't assess him, don't know what's going on? I don't believe Ryan Garcia will underestimate the, the man that's in front of him. What he says publicly might be different than what he does privately. Uh, privately. And, and so I think it's a great fight. Uh, I think... Um, uh, it's an intriguing fight. I think Danny Garcia um, is, is, is reinventing himself because we're talking about him. Ryan but, Garcia. Oh, right, sorry, Ryan That's Garcia. Right. We're talking about him. We're talking about him. So, so all of a sudden, whatever he's doing, right. he's done the job. Again, that, uh, is it that? Is it not? I don't know. I hope it is that he is just trolling us because that would be in, in, incredibly I, scary I think to he's see. I trolling you, because, everybody, because I don't think the people around him, his handlers around him, would let him... <clears throat> let him off the leash, let him put him in such a, 
uh, a dangerous environment if, if they didn't think he was of sound mind. Do you think mind. that he's doing it to sort of make Devin think that he's not all in? Ali did it. Ali did it. Tyson Fury's done it with when he bought Klitschko. He wants you to disrespect him to think this guy's not with it. Mm. Whereas really, he's going to be doing the work behind the scenes. It might be genius, it might be a maturity that we've not seen of him. But whatever he's doing, if it works for him, it works for him. But I believe when it comes to fight night, I think this is, I think we're being trolled. I'm not, I'm not buying it. Who wins? Well, um, I don't think it's Garcia. Uh, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I think it's a good fight. We just got the axe, you gotta go. Thank you so much for your time, I appreciate it. Hopefully we'll be able to catch up with you later in the week. We'll be back on again. You. See you later. Bye-bye, fans.